Hey, hey, what's up, Bob? All right. So, anyways, my vision thing that I I had um, my first vision in 1994 at the ranch is at Troy Regas's ranch. I the mustache. No, you're all was. washed out. You're all washed out. Treat um, the yeah, light like that. Oh, I know. I'm all washed up. The light should be behind me. It should. Well, facing here, let's do facing like... you. I mean, put it on pause. Okay. So, anyways, my original vision in 1994 at the by the Mustang Ranch um, that told me about Troy Regas and Dave Burgess being um, main players in the apocalypse was in 1994 on Monday, Thursday, which lasted through Easter, and it's affected my life ever since. Telling me about the Sangrelians and the Sangarians, the Reptilians, and um, the Illuminati and the Freemasons and everything that's happened and stuff. But anyway, um, so. Seven years after my original vision, I finally, I was going out with William Romer. He was prospecting for the Hell's Angels. Then, oh, shoot, my shirt's... The apocalyptic horror, or no, the horror of babble on. <laughs> she babbles on and on and on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, William Romer, I dated him, and he was a prospect for the Hell's Angels when I dated him. And this is when I got this. Vision, and I think it was because when I used to go out with Will, we had this weird type of communication, and he was the bartender at the ranch. And when it was, you know, no customers there in the parlor, you know, the girls, there was no clients or customers, nobody there, you know, he'd be behind the bar and I would be in the front, and we would just sit there and just stare into each other's eyes. He's got the most beautiful brown eyes for hours. I mean, and not talk, but we were like communicating. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was really strange. I've never had that with anybody else before like that. But it was almost like he was downloading it information to me and then that's when I got this vision which I'm convinced William helped me to get. And also I call God our creator Homer, you know, and then William Romer. <laughs> William Howard Romer, so you take the H and then the O. Anyway, he's cool. I hope you're doing good, Will. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to start from the beginning again and read all the way through. Now this is a partial part of my vision. It's, I've gotten much, much more to this story, but nobody's ever... Um, uh, wanted to hear any more of it. I mean, you know, like the Hells Angels and the Illuminatis and the Masons, usually because um, I'm against the rules and regulations and they're not supposed to talk to me. But anyway, okay. Okay. Let's start at the beginning of the preface first, okay? <clears throat> okay, since I can remember, I have been asking God to tell me the real truth about himself on a personal level. I said to him, God, you cannot be as mean as the Bible makes you. I cannot believe that is your true message because so many things in the Bible are about war, torture, sacrifice, and suffering. I said, also, there are many statements that contradict themselves, and I prayed and begged and stopped my feet. And <sighs> okay, so um, I said, there are many statements that, this is, I'm talking to God when I was a little kid. I said, there are many statements that contradict themselves, and I prayed, and I asked, and I begged, and I stopped my feet and yelled and cried, I even tried to bribe them, um, throughout my life, and those prayers have went on since I was, well, uh, three years old is when I got hit with a baseball bat, and I started being able to communicate with spirits, and seeing on other dimensions, and having visions, and dreams, and telepathy, and clairvoyance, and stuff, but six years old is when I started developing a relationship with my creator. And so I was not satisfied, and then I decided to ask Jesus, and then I got the feeling that I might get the right answer, <clears throat> and I did. And he's like a hippie. He's not like how the Bible says. I mean, he's like really cool, you know? He'd be cool and fun to hang out with. He would have probably pot leaves growing in his feet and tie-dyes. No, don't take offense, I mean, because anybody. But anyway, Jesus is cool. He was a rebel. He did. He, he went up there to the high priests and the Illuminatis and... and um, they would have their rank and their ritual robes on, and they would be, you know, different colored robes for how high of rank and how elite they were, thinking that they were so close to the gods. And Jesus would walk in without the rank and wearing the same color robes that they had on for their high priest robes, and then do the magic and just like totally do it a million times better than theirs and totally make fools out of them. But yet they were like the lords, the gods. And when people say, Dear Lord, hello, Lord is what you call royalty. Uh, hello. Okay, so I asked Jesus, and then um, I got the right answers. It didn't take long. 
And I was actually seven when I really began to develop a personal relationship. Then I went to Awanas and then they started telling me there was no reincarnation and I walked out and never went back. Because um, I know there is. Okay, so I have been able to see and hear and communicate with spirits since I was about three. Although it's very difficult to keep a peaceful feeling in my heart because my family and my friends began to give me a complex. Because it's not godly or natural to communicate with spirits. And I knew that I was because of the accuracy of the information that I received. And it was valid and true for the most part. Well, my family told me that I was doing the devil's work. And by communicating with spirits, and told me that this was the work of the devil. So it did not take long for my communications to become almost completely with demons of various sorts. Well, I was pretty frightened because I was just a little girl, and the brainwashing that my mom did to me made me believe that I was somehow evil and bad, but I knew that I wasn't because I was a very loving person and caring and friendly person, but the that, that did not stop me from feeling that there was something very wrong with me. I was tormented and frightened by these demons for the longest time because I've been able to see them and stuff. There was always that little bit of divine interaction though that came through, though and Jesus stayed close to me. Um, and anyhow, working on an autobiography, I guess, but who I believe the God, the real God, our Creator is, is who I believe gave me this vision. It just feels right. This is the God that does not punish you or curse you and your offspring and does not say bow down and worship me. I, I call God our Creator Homer for home because he tells me when, he, when people pray to God that every egomaniac on every dimension answers and he don't want to fight the crowd. And he says that it's the name God that has caused people to forget about him. So I call him Homer for home, and he thinks that's cool. Uh, this is a vision I received when I was with William Romer um, in 1992. Or wait, excuse me, um, 2002, sorry. 1994 is when I had my first vision, and in 2002, 2003 is when I had this one. Okay, so just listen to this story that was given to me, and ponder the ideas and tell me what you think if you want, or just keep it to yourself. But I know that after I was 12, I stopped being afraid of the demons. And Jesus told me how to be, stop being afraid of them. He told me to turn them into something funny instead of frightening. He told me that this was how he used to deal with the demons when they attacked him, by animating them. So when I see or feel a demon, I turn him into the Tasmanian devil in my mind. And then I imagine that I have a huge blow-up plastic baseball bat. And then I imagine imaginize. <laughs> No, then I visualize and ima imagine that I have a huge blow-up baseball bat and imagine or visualize that I am bopping the demon on the top of the head with it and watching him bounce around. Notice that this is not violent, a violent thought because the baseball bat is rubber or plastic and it does not hurt the demon in any way. It just bounces him around. <laughs> um, well, this is how I got a little control over my demons and since then they do not scare me and so therefore they cannot hurt me. So I realize now that I can communicate and see and hear divine angelic beings and demons. So I'm working on getting control over my visions and communications. But now I will read to you the story that I believe that I received from the real God and our Creator, who I like to call Homer for home because to be with him is to finally be home. Okay. Do -do -do. Okay, now this is going to probably be a part one, a part two, and a part three because it's not all going to fit on a ten minute disc, okay? And tell me when it's 10 minutes, Val. How many do I have? You have one minute left. I have one minute? Okay, well, um, tell me. Oh. You have about a minute and a half. Okay. Okay, here it got, goes. You can go to like 10, 15. God told me that he had received a certain level of accomplishment in his evolution a very, very long time ago. The, the point of evolution that God had reached was accomplished after him living many, many lifetimes and experiencing many situations and tests. Actually, he tells me that this is the point of evolution that we will be going to if we can survive with our souls. And by doing this, we will be able to keep our identities intact and become immortal. You know, like, not forget and be, you know, always forget and then come back and forget. This is where we get to keep our memory. And 
So, um, ten minutes. Okay, be back in a minute. Did you already stop?